Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to our beautiful city of Vallejo. I am Vice Mayor Rosanna Verder Aliga. I am Nestor Aliga's wife. And I welcome you all to our beautiful and historic city of Vallejo. There will be a few last minute changes in the program, so I ask for your patience. And unfortunately, there will be no flyover and other participants cannot join us today. But like all of our past and present military members, we will make the most with what we have this morning. Remain standing for about four minutes while, we, while the U.S. Naval Sea Cadets present the callers. And then after that, we will sing the national anthem with Airman First Class Natalie Anks of the United States Air Force Band of the Golden West. And then we will be, it will be followed by Ralph Halford for the Pledge of Allegiance. And then we will listen to the invocation from Bishop Brian Harris. Cadets present the callers, and presenting the callers is Rear Admiral O'Kane, Division of the U.S. Naval Sea Cadets. Rear Admiral O'Kane. And Natalie Anks will sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the its red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Please follow after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, arms. Let us pray. Dear Lord, today we honor our veterans, all worthy men and women who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and to protect their country. We pray that you will bless them for their unselfish service in the continual struggle to preserve our freedoms our safety, and our country's heritage. 
and for all of us, bless them abundantly for the hardships they faced, for the sacrifices they made, for their many different contributions to America's victories over tyranny and oppression. We respect them, we thank them, we honor them. We are so very proud of them. We pray that you will watch over these special people, bless them with peace, health, and happiness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The national colors up on the hill is already raised and the color guard may now march out. We thank the award-winning Rear Admiral Richard O'Kane, Division of the U.S. Naval Sea Cadets Corps, and the Navy League, and the California Maritime Academy for placing the flags in each grave this past weekend. Let us also thank the Naval Sea Cadets for expertly presenting the colors like they have done for so many years in our memorial, on our Memorial Day and Veterans Day ceremonies here at the Mare Island Naval Cemetery. I would like to introduce the present elected officials from the federal, state, county, and city levels. I would like to start off with our Congressman, 5th District, Honorable Mike Thompson. <laughs> Solano County Supervisor, District 1, Erin Hannigan. Solano County Supervisor, 2nd District, Honorable Monica Brown. We have our Vallejo Mayor, the Honorable Robert McConnell. <laughs> Council members Pippin Dew, Council members uh, Monica, uh, Council members Katie Meisner, Council members Mina Loera Diaz, Council members um, Tina Ariola are here today. And myself, Vice Mayor of Vallejo, Rosanna Verderaliga. Thank you. We have uh, former Mayor Bob Sampayan with us. Former Mayor Tony Intindley is also with us today. Vallejo School Board Member President, uh, our uh, President of the Board, to Dr. Tony Ubalde. Board member Tony Gross and board member John Fox. The Honorable Mayor of Benicia, Steve Young, is with us, I believe. We have school board member uh, Christy Gardner also with us. Vallejo Recreation District Board member Rizal Verderaliga. We have Major General Miles Davis with us. We also have former Mayor Osby Davis. Colonel Gwendolyn Foster. And representing uh, Assemblyman Tim Grayson is Caroline Legion. Mr. Audrey. Autry, A.J. James is with us. The Honorable Carnig Ohanishan is with us as well. We have Captain Ralph Parrott and his wife Betty Parrott from Virginia. Mr. Glenn Powers is with us from Washington, D.C. Mr. Bob Wiley is also with us, another veteran advocate. Mr. Dwayne Sarmiento, the junior national commander for the uh, Vallejo, I mean for the veterans of foreign wars. Thank you, Mr. Sarmiento. I would like to call on uh, Mayor Robert McConnell, who is a decorated combat veteran. He valiantly served in the Vietnam War with the U.S. Army 9th Infantry Division and elected to the Vallejo City Council in 2011 as a uh, council member and elected as Vallejo mayor in November 2020. He specializes in bankruptcy as a full-time attorney 
and has over 25 years of experience as a local attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, our Vallejo Mayor, Robert McConnell. Thank you, and on behalf of the citizens and the city of Vallejo, I wish to say I appreciate your being here. To those who are veterans and veterans at heart, I say I am very proud of you because your efforts have what has brought this to fruition today. As the combat engineers say, actions speak louder than words. Your actions speak very loudly. There are many speakers here today who have much to opine as to what brought this about. And with that, let's get into the thick of it. Thank you very much and thank you for being here. Mr. Powers was a United States Army Infantry Officer and retiring as, retired as a lieutenant, lieutenant Colonel in 2006. He had combat troops tours in Operation Just Cause and Operation Enduring Freedom and held various command and staff positions at Fort Ord, Hawaii, West Point, and Fort Campbell. Today, he is responsible for leading National Sanitary Administration's five district offices, 135 national cemeteries, and he provides leadership for national policies on eligibility of burial and memorial benefits and programs to develop and improve a national VA national cemeteries. So, Mr. Powers, please come forward, and we would like to hear from you this morning. And he flew all the way from Washington, D.C. Thank you, Rosanna. Good morning, uh, Congressman Thompson, uh, Mayor McConnell, other distinguished guests. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, I've come from Washington, D.C., but that's not a problem. I mean, my job is to, to visit uh, cemeteries uh, to make sure that we're taking care of veterans, the National Cemetery Administration, that, that's what we do. I've received a wonderful welcome from the from the city of Vallejo. Many uh, individuals I've worked with over the phone over the past few years, um, and for the first time last night at a reception, I met many of them, and and uh, and I, I thank you for the welcome. Uh, on behalf of Secretary McDonough, Under Secretary for Memorial Affairs Quinns, I'm representing the VA today, but you, the citizens of this proud city are representing yourselves and you're thinking about the veterans and that's what Veterans Day is all about. All across this country today, there are communities like Vallejo that are commemorating this special day where we uh, commemorate the service and sacrifice of veterans. And it's clear that um, Vallejo is at the tops for doing that. So um, I am honored to be here with you today. Um, it, is, uh, it is an impressive event um, as we think about veterans, it comes to mind um, one thing that um, has been thought of as we, as we think about uh, our life and our presence in the world. It's been said that all of us die two deaths. The first death is when our final breath leaves our body, and our second death is when no one remembers that we existed. So in the National Cemetery Administration and in, in, in the proud stewardship of this cemetery and the things that this community has done, it's all about making sure that that second death never occurs for these veterans. So that, that is what Veterans Day is all about. That is what this, this event is all about. Um, I'm privileged to be here, thankful to meet uh, so many um, of this community that have Part of, part of the organized to, to make this cemetery better. Um, uh, and, and obviously, and some people from other communities, uh, um, you know, Ralph Parrott is back, from, back you know, from Virginia, where I live, probably about three miles down the road in, in Northern Virginia. Uh, Carnegie O'Hanessian uh, from, the, from the Navy had a lot to do, tremendous amount of, of work to do with the uh, IRT program that, that fixed the, the cemetery. Um, uh, I met Bob Wiley less than 24 hours ago uh, as, as, and as, as we were walking through the cemetery. Uh, it, it is truly an honor to, to, to be part of this effort. Um, I worked with uh, the last mayor, Bob, over the phone and finally get to see him. And uh, I'm, I'm privileged to work with uh, Mayor McConnell as, as we move on in this effort. So once again, honor to be here. Uh, thank you for being here and honoring, and honoring veterans and what, what, they, what they have done 
and the sacrifices they have made. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colonel Powers. Our next speaker is Junior Vice Commander of Veterans of Foreign Wars, Dwayne Sarmiento. Dwayne Sarmiento served in the United States Navy from 1988 to 1997 and the United States Naval Reserve from 2002 to 2006, earning his VFW eligibility by serving in Operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm. He received the Navy Combat Action Ribbon, Navy Good Conduct Medal, the Southeast Asia Service Medal with three campaign stars, and he was elected the Junior Vice Commander-in-Chief of the Veterans of Foreign Ar Wars of the United States on August 3, 2021. And at the 122nd VFW National Convention in Kansas City, Missouri. Let's welcome to Vallejo his first trip to California, Mr. Dwayne Sarmento. Congressman Thompson, distinguished guest, thank you for having me here today. And I'd be remiss, I know City of Vallejo is a proud Filipino community. Yes. Salahat ng Filipinos dito mabuhay. I'm glad to be here on this special occasion. I arrived two days ago in California and it was raining. I thought it never rained in California. I like to think the kid from New Jersey brought a little sunshine. On behalf of the 1.5 million members of the VFW and its auxiliary, Thank you for this invitation for this event here today. Our motto in the Veterans of Foreign Wars is everything we do, we do for veterans. That's not a, just a tagline or a slogan. That is what we live by. And as we celebrate Veterans Day today, we must remember the sacrifice and service of the 19 million Americans that have served our country. We live in a country we can do whatever we want whenever we want, within limitation, of course. And we can't ign not ignore that those 19 million Americans gave us that right to do so. There are certain groups of veterans I like to recognize. I, I noticed there's several World War II veterans here today. Chief, I see you over there. I can tell by your ribbons. Uh, the other gentleman I met uh, from the American Legion right there. I want to thank you and the 16 million men and women that served with you during World War II. Your generation, without a doubt, is the greatest generation, and you saved the planet. Thank you so much for your service to our country. Thank you again. To the Korean veterans, they served after World War II when communist Russia was our biggest threat for 45 years. You stopped the communists dead in their tracks in the cold hills and mountains of Korea. I talked to a lot of peacetime veterans. They say, I, I served in peace. Make no mistake, there would have been no peace without your service to our country. To the Vietnam veterans, and I know there's plenty here today. Thank you for your service. I was born in 1969. I, I know there was tumultuous times that you went through coming home. But one of the greatest attributes the Vietnam veterans have taught us as Americans through their trials and tribulations, no matter what your politics, no matter if you're for a war, against a war, do not confuse the warrior with the war. I want to thank you. You've taught America that. To the Desert Storm, Iraqi, and Afghanistan veterans, you are the smartest, best trained, highly motivated service members the world has ever seen. Because of your service, the United States will go on for centuries. We're here at Mare Island, the oldest naval cemetery on the West Coast. This is, and again, I was, I was in awe when I came up here this morning and took a look at this place. Three Medal of Honor winners are buried here. These service members buried here are more than a name, a number, or a headstone. They are veterans that serve with honor and distinction. I want to thank the city of Vallejo, 
the volunteers that took care of this, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, which made this priority legislation to work with the VA to make them, or I shouldn't say make them, to accept them to have this cemetery now come under the Veterans Administration. They will forever now be honored. So thank you, and Mr. Powers, thank you for being here today. And if, if I could say something, uh, Mr. Powers, what you said, Pierre Clayson was an American veteran and philanthropist. Matter of fact, he's from California. One of his quotes was, to be killed is not the worst that could happen. To be lost is not the worst that could happen. But to be forgotten, that is the worst that could happen. From the efforts today, with the partnership with the city of Vallejo and the Veterans Administration, that'll never happen to these heroes buried here today. I wanna to thank you so much for inviting me here today. It was truly an honor. And may God bless all of you. May God bless our troops serving around the world and at home. And may God always bless the United States of America. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Sarmento. Thank you so very much. Our next speaker is our former mayor, Bob Sampayan. Bob Sampayan is the son of the late Major Rupert Sampayan, who served in the U.S. Army during World War II, Korean War, and the Vietnam War. He was elected to the city council in 2011 and as mayor in 2016. He secured the Department of Defense Innovative Readiness Training Program for this cemetery, while bolstering support from veterans volunteers, and the California State Guard. He was instrumental in negotiating for the Mare Island provision of the Remain Intact in fiscal year 2021 National Defense Authorization Act, which became public law on January 1st, 2021. And before I steal any more thunder from former Mayor Sampayan, please let's welcome former Mayor Bob Sampayan. Thank you so very much, Vice Mayor, and good morning to all of you. Welcome. It's just a beautiful day today. Look at who said it doesn't rain in California. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Dwayne. It does, but today is gorgeous. The good Lord has blessed us with a gorgeous day for here, all of us, to honor our veterans, those that have served our country for many years, those that are still serving. I can't thank you enough. So. Again, thank you for allowing me to speak to you this morning about my thoughts of Veterans Day 2021. Really, again, this is truly an honor. To our many distinguished guests, welcome, and thank you for all you've done to make the Mare Island Naval Cemetery a spectacular reality, honoring our military heroes. You know, it was 103 years ago today in 1918 that the war to end all wars, World War I, came to an end. It was the 11th month, on the 11th day, 11th hour, that hostility stopped in Europe. Sadly, that was not the war that ended all wars, as we have seen hostilities to this day in many parts of our world. It's also time to remember those that gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect our country and our freedoms. Yes, the cost of freedom is staggering. And when we count the number of those who died defending our great nation, we must also remember and thank the families of those that served and are currently serving. The families that wondered if they'd ever see their son, their daughter, husband, or wife again. Families that each day and every day pray that their loved ones will return and return home safely. You know, as I look out at our audience, I see many faces of people that have proudly served our armed forces. I thank all of you. I sincerely thank all of you for what you've done, the sacrifices you've made, as well as what your family has made, and the many years of service that you've given to our country. Again, behind me is the Mare Island Cemetery. Its present restoration is the culmination of many years of work by many individuals. One individual I want to speak about is a person I met for the first time today, although I have spoken to him to him on the phone on many occasions. And in 2017, I received a call from Captain Ralph Parrott, U.S. Navy, retired. Captain Parrott, as many of you know, was very eloquent in its expressing his displeasure of the condition of the cemetery. And with a question that I will always remember, 
Captain. So, Mayor, how are you going to get that fixed? <laughs> Those were literally the words after you introduced yourself. That began several years of collaboration with many local, county, state, and federal agencies. And I want to take a moment and especially recognize the City of Vallejo Public Works Department has spent many hours working with the IRT group and U.S. Army Reserve's 801st Engineering Company based here on Amer Island. You'll be hearing from some of those individuals shortly. Needless to say, without Captain Parrott's tenacity, and do I really mean tenacity, and his desire to honor those buried here, who knows how the cemetery would look today. With that, Captain, thank you. Could we give him a round of applause, please? Again, I welcome all of you to this Veterans Day Memorial, and I ask that you thank our veterans for their proud and dedicated service. I next have the honor of introducing our next speaker. I'm absolutely proud and honored to do this, and that is Deputy Assistant to the Secretary of the Navy, Karnig Ohanesian. I met Secretary Ohanesian over the phone when he called to talk about the Mare Island Cemetery after receiving a call from Captain Parrott. Imagine that. I'll never forget the look on my assistant's face when she came into my office. And generally, she would just buzz me, and I'd pick up the phone, say what's going on, and she'd tell me. But she came into my office and said, uh, Boss, you've got a call from Washington, D.C. And the caller is the secretary, assistant secretary of the Navy. That phone call was the beginning of an amazing relationship between the U.S. military, City of Vallejo, barrier veterans groups, our Congressman Mike Thompson, and Secretary Ohanesian's office. His efforts got the ball rolling for the Department of Defense Individual Readiness Training Program. Just a very quick bio about Mr. Ohanesian. He was selected the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy Environment in 2016. He's the Principal Policy Advisor to the Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Energy, Installations, and Environment on environmental programs, including planning, protection, compliance, and restoration. He was selected to the Senior Executive Service in December 2013 as Deputy Director, Chief of Naval Operations, Energy, and Environmental Readiness Division, where he was the senior civilian responsible for policy and resourcing of four programs affecting fleet, shore, and readiness. Mr. Onesian has worked over 13 years in the private sector at engineering consulting companies in Southern California, rising to senior positions, including principal engineer, executive officer. He holds a bachelor's degree of science in chemical engineering from University of California, Berkeley. Yeah, that was my dad's alma mater. <laughs> and a master's of business administration degree from the University of California, Los Angeles, which he received in 2002. He's a registered professional engineer in the state of California as a chemical and civil engineer. He's a recipient of two Department of Navy Meritorious Civilian Service Awards. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Ohanesian. I think I need to bring my bio off the website. That, that was too much. Uh, uh, Congressman Thompson, uh, Mayor McConnell, Mayor Sampayan, uh, honorable members of the City Council, uh, distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored that the City of Vallejo invited me to this ceremony to commemorate Veterans Day at the historic Mare Island Naval Cemetery. Today we join the City of Vallejo in celebrating the historic preservation and transformation of the cemetery to honor the memory of our veterans. Uh, Mare Island Cemetery, Naval Cemetery is the final resting place for nearly 900 veterans. You heard how in uh, 2017, Mr. Ralph Parrott, Mr. Nestor Oliga too, and other concerned citizens mustered veteran support and community recognition that as a final resting place for our veterans, the cemetery is special ground that must be restored. Uh, you also heard about the city of Vallejo and the Department of Defense working together on the IRT project using city resources and military reserve unit manpower to restore the historic site to a state of dignity befitting the honor and memory of our veterans. 
uh, the U.S. Army Reserve 801st Engineer Company, the City of Vallejo Public Works Department, and many volunteers began the restoration work in September 2019. And despite an interruption by the COVID-19 pandemic, the soldiers, engineers, and volunteers restored the cemetery to a state that our veterans deserve in recognition of their service to a grateful nation. Uh, veterans Day is a day for honoring all veterans. In contrast to Memorial Day, which is a time to remember those who gave their lives for our country, Veterans Day honors all of those who have served the country in war or peace, living or dead, and is intended to thank living veterans for their sacrifices. It is in this spirit that I would like to recognize Major Doug Hayes from the Army's 397th Engineer Battalion, who led a lot of this work, and the soldiers from the 801st, 322nd, and 374th Engineer Companies. They have performed their duty in an exemplary and highly professional manner, and on behalf of the Department of the Navy, I offer my congratulations for the great job they have done. To recognize, yes, absolutely. Um, to recognize the heart and soul and care, and you'll see that when you see, if you haven't walked around, the care they've poured into the spectacular work on the Mare Island Naval Cemetery. Uh, please join me in honoring these soldiers for their patriotism, love of country, and willingness to serve and sacrifice. Again, I thank you for the opportunity to offer these remarks on this memorable occasion. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Secretary Ohanishan. Our next speaker is the Chief Executive Officer of Turo University, Shelley Barkley. She um, serves as the administrative and academic head of the Nevada and Northern California campuses of Northern of Turo University. And Ms. Berkeley oversees two of the fastest growing medical schools in the Western United States, and as well as allied health science and education programs with the current total enrollment of more than 3,000 students. She also served as United States House of Representatives from 1998 to 2013, and she is a colleague of Congressman Mike Thompson, and she was the first woman to serve her district in Nevada and held the position for seven terms. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Shirley, Shirley Bartley. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. I am so very delighted to be here with you today and very honored to represent Toro University. I, along with our Provost Sarah Schweitzer, who is a native from the city of Vallejo and has four generations of her family that worked at the shipyards, um, creating the magnificent ships that kept this nation safe. We together are very aware of our responsibility to be good stewards of the property that our school inhabits. We know of the sacrifices that were made, the service that was performed, and the tens of thousands of uh, men and women that came through Mare Island Naval uh, Base in order to keep this nation safe. And it is for those people that we are here today on Veterans Day to give homage to those that came before us. I want to acknowledge my husband who was in the Army for nine and a half years as a doctor during the Vietnam War. He was assigned to the Brooks Army Naval, uh, or the Brooks Army um, uh, burn unit, uh, taking care of the most disfigured and damaged people coming home from Vietnam. He is in his 70s now and still working as a doctor. And I believe he still has that sense of commitment and honor to take care of our fellow citizens. I want to briefly mention my father because I don't want him to experience a second death because he was forgotten. My dad was a 17-year-old kid from the Lower East Side of New York, born into an immigrant family just five years after they came to the United States seeking refuge from what was unfolding in Europe. He was born, he was 17, when World War II broke out. 
he and a lot of his friends from the mean streets of New York enlisted. My father enlisted in the Navy. He saw action in 10 battles on the USS Langley Air, um, Air Force carrier or naval carrier. And the experience that he had then, he did not share with his family until many years later when he was towards the end of his life. At the age of 85, my dad started talking about his experiences and the things he remembered the most was when his ship after two years at sea docked at Sausalito, California. Imagine a 20 year old kid at that time from the Lower East Side of New York docking in paradise. He had never been back until my sister and I took him back there when he was 85. We had lunch on the dock. He loved every minute of it. And then he became very animated in telling us what had transpired during his years serving this nation during World War II in the Navy. He had been injured at the end of their tour of duty and said he wanted to see, he remembered vividly in his mind, but he couldn't remember where he was taken in order to be attended to. So my sister and I took him to Treasure Island. We looked around, that was not it. We went to another area that had a beautiful um, Air Force carrier and he had he was walking around and showing us everything and telling us everything that wasn't the place and then i finally said to him it was towards the end of the day i said dad why don't you come and see where i work uh you know i'd love to show you mare island and as we were driving onto the campus we passed the hospital and all of a sudden he said that's it that's where i was that's where I was taken care of. And I realized how much a part of my history comes from Mare Island. It was where his ship was built. It was where he was treated when he was injured. It is where I am now as an adult taking care of one of the best medical schools, pharmacy schools, PA schools, and schools of education in all of the state of California. How extraordinary is that? So I honor my father today as a veteran who came home, married my mother, had me, had my sister, and went on to live a very good life. I recognize that many veterans were not and are not as lucky. So I think today on Veterans Day, we not only honor those that sacrifice so much for all of us in service to their nation, but also acknowledge our responsibility as a nation to ensure that those coming back obviously with physical injuries, get the best possible health care, with mental health uh, injuries and PTSD and brain injuries that you cannot see, are treated with dignity and respect and get the service that they need. The idea of fixing this cemetery is so important for our war dead and it honors our veterans and taking care of the homeless. 40% of the homeless in this country are veterans. We have a responsibility to them as well. And that brings me to my main responsibility this morning, and that's to introduce my colleague, um, Congressman Mike Thompson, and share with you some thoughts about this absolutely lovely, honorable man. We were freshmen together, back in 1998. And as Mike said, as I was walking up the best class that ever, <laughs> that ever served in Congress, 
Um, I, I, not yet, Mike. Um, <laughs> um, as soon as I met Mike Thompson, I knew I was in the presence of somebody very special. He was an honorable man, loved his family, loved his country, and loved the people that he represents. He knew more about his congressional district than I suspect 99% of the members of Congress. He knew the people, he knew the businesses, he knew the industry, and he represented them so very well. He is a combat veteran, received the Purple Heart, and then went on to a life of public service. I cannot say enough about your representative in Congress. You could not have a better one. You could not, as a veteran, have somebody that works harder for you and supports you more than Congressman Mike Thompson. It was my pleasure and honor to serve with him, and it is my pleasure and honor that the school that I run happens to be in his congressional district. How lucky am I? And with that, let me introduce you to a wonderful member of Congress, my former colleague, Congressman Mike Thompson. Well, Shelley, thank you very much for a very kind uh, introduction. And um, I think you all get a taste of how uh, energetic and, uh, and, and committed Shelley is. That's why when we were in Congress together, we used to refer to her as a gentlewoman from the state of Las Vegas. <laughs> she was a tireless advocate for her, uh, her district, and she does um, a fantastic job uh, for Toro University uh, today. And, and Shelley, it's great to see you. Uh, there's a lot of people here that uh, I, I'd like to go through and, and, and name everybody, but I'll, I'll truncate it a little bit. I want to thank uh, Captain Parrott. I, I think he, he's left, but uh, for the work that he did to uh, bring to everyone's attention uh, the state of the cemetery that you've heard about uh, already. Uh, Colonel Nestor, you were part of that too. Uh, you, uh, you were uh, front and center uh, with, uh, with the captain and, uh, and really uh, did great work, as, as did the entire uh, Vallejo uh, community. Uh, Colonel Powers, thanks for coming out uh, from Washington. Thanks for uh, your willingness to work with us to make sure the transition uh, goes smoothly and the cemetery is, uh, is held in the esteem uh, that a cemetery with this great history, as uh, Dwayne said, three Medal of Honor winners, the family of, uh, of uh, Francis Scott Key. This is, uh, this is an incredible uh, place. And, uh, and Dwayne, th thanks a lot for uh, reminding me that uh, the year you were born, 1969, I was in Vietnam. So th thank you, young man. <laughs> and I want to thank the Navy League of, of the U.S., the Vallejo Council, uh, the city of Vallejo, the, the Mayor's Bob, uh, both there, uh, current Mayor Bob, a uh, fellow Vietnam uh, veteran. Uh, thank you for your service, uh, uh, Mayor McConnell. And, uh, and Aaron Hannigan, the, the supervisor, Aaron's dad, was the first Vietnam veteran elected to the California State Assembly. And, um, and he and I were, were very close. I was the first veteran, Vietnam veteran elected to the California State Senate. And, uh, and, and Tom, her, her dad, who's sadly not with us today, but um, just was such a great friend and, and a mentor and, uh, and, a, a, and a, a, real, a real hero. Uh, with the uh, with the Marine Corps, so so thank you for for being here, and, and thank you to all of you uh, for being here to honor our veterans today. Uh, as it's been pointed out, it's a beautiful day. There's probably 3,010 other things that you could be doing, uh, taking advantage of this great weather, taking advantage of, uh, of of a holiday. But the fact that you're here to honor our veterans uh, makes us all proud and, and humbled. Uh, as it was pointed out by a number of speakers, you know, Veterans Day came about after World War I uh, to honor those who were killed in that war to end all war and to uh, honor those who returned uh, from battle. And as we know now, uh, Veterans Day is to honor all veterans. And 
I would be remiss if I didn't point out to honor the families of all veterans. Uh, we have great gratitude for the families. You know, families, they waited, they worried while their loved one was overseas, was deployed. They managed all of the duties by themselves when their loved ones were deployed. And they were there for their veterans when their veterans came home. And they're there for their veterans now. So uh, don't ever uh, think that uh, families weren't every bit a part of any celebration we have uh, for veterans. They're a very, very big and uh, very respected part of the veterans uh, community. Now, th there's some veterans who may feel um, a little different about uh, this Veterans Day. Now, this is the first Veterans Day that we will celebrate after the end of our longest war, Afghanistan. And it might be difficult for some of those veterans. It's a, it's a new experience for them. You know, some may be spending today uh, reflecting, thinking about their service, their brothers and sisters who weren't as fortunate and didn't come home. Um, some may be spending their time with their families, uh, grateful that they're home, that their uh, families are, are, are there and the family unit is again uh, intact. The rest of us though, we should take this time to renew our commitment to veterans. You know, being a veteran doesn't end when the war is over. And our support shouldn't end when those veterans come home. We need to be there for them as they were there for us. Now, in Congress, uh, veterans issues is one of my top priorities. And I think the Congress has been done remarkably well in this last year dealing with veterans uh, issues. We've provided more funding uh, to train uh, health care workers for, uh, for the VA to take care of our veterans. We've spent money uh, to build uh, facilities for, uh, for uh, veterans, new facilities that we so desperately need. And I need to point out that uh, President Biden's Build Back Better uh, Act that we hear so much about, that bill has $5 billion in it for veterans issues. Everything from updating aged facilities to digitizing records. And as someone who is a client of the VA, uh, I use their uh, services, uh, I know how in arrears their record keeping uh, is. As someone whose office works uh, uh, quite a bit, uh, probably the majority of our constituent work in my three district offices are dealing with veterans issues. And I know how difficult it is uh, to get those records uh, processed and to make sure that the veterans get the services that they earned. And by digitizing these records, it's gonna make a, a real difference. So that's, uh, that's an important part of, uh, of uh, our commitment to uh, veterans in this Congress. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about the cemetery. Um, I'm, I am extremely impressed by the work that was done uh, to date. And I know that when this is all said and done, it's gonna be even better uh, than this. And I, I wanna point out that um, Nestor and, and a Colonel and Captain Parrott uh, recognized there was a problem. And like any good officers, they came to the NCO. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know, the, the old saying, it would take an act of Congress. That, that's exactly what, it, what, what happened. Uh, we went through everything. And uh, yes, we had, uh, we had the, uh, the uh, group come out uh, from the engineers and, and do all the work that they did. Uh, that, that wasn't enough. They did a great job, but it wasn't enough. Uh, this cemetery is special, as you've heard a number of speakers uh, talk about uh, today. It really did needed to be elevated and it needed to be turned over to the Veterans Administration. And in order to do that, uh, we found out that uh, it was gonna take an act of Congress. And um, the legislation that, uh, that I carried 
uh, was uh, successful in the House and, uh, and then not so uh, in the Senate. And there's always another way to do things, another way to skin a cat, as they say. So we put that bill into the National Defense uh, Authorization uh, Bill. And, um, and we got it passed. And we had great help. Senator Tester over uh, on the Senate side, Senator Feinstein, uh, they, were, they were fantastic. We were able to get that bill, uh, get that bill passed and uh, signed into law. And that wasn't even easy because if you remember, that bill was vetoed uh, by the, by the uh, former president. And that bill had to come back for a veto override, something that is very, very rare and very difficult to do. Uh, but the House and the Senate recognized that uh, our veterans were more important than some procedural veto. Uh, we v voted to override that veto to fund our veterans programs and to ensure that this cemetery uh, would go where it needs to go in regard to who was uh, taking care of it. So. Um, I'm looking forward, I'm glad to be here today, I'm looking forward to coming back in out years to see just how wonderful uh, it will be once the uh, VA has taken full responsibility and restored it to its, nat uh, its natural beauty. So uh, thank you and, uh, and uh, Colonel, I look forward to uh, working with you to make sure that that goes uh, smoothly. And in closing, I just wanna say, and. And uh, for those of you who've been here before and heard me talk or Memorial Day, uh, I always close every veteran's speech with this. And it's a quote from John Kennedy, because uh, we really need to make sure we double down. If we wanna honor the service and the sacrifice of veterans, we need to make sure we double down on, uh, on ensuring a peaceful future. And John Kennedy said, Mankind must put an end to war before war puts an end to mankind. So remember that and do everything you can to make sure that our future is a peaceful future. Thank you, God bless our veterans and God bless the United States of America. Thank you so much uh, Congressman Thompson for all that you have done for these hallowed grounds. And I thank you especially for your staff here in Vallejo and in Washington, D.C. for being patient with my husband, Colonel Aliga, because he was a little pushy, not a little pushy, very pushy, <laughs> on the deliberate congressional process to transfer this cemetery back to the Veterans Administration Federal Government. Our beloved veterans, distinguished guests, mga kababayan, a pleasant day to you all. On behalf of the Philippine Consulate General in San Francisco, I am honored and humbled to join you virtually to honor the sacrifices and contributions of all our veterans living and departed. Today's solemn remembrance of Veterans Day brings us to the historic Mare Island Naval Cemetery, final resting place to more than 1,000 veterans, including 13 Filipino sailors who served before World War I. Next month, we commemorate 80 years since World War II began with lightning speed in the Pacific Theater. In the face of unimaginable hardship and death, Filipino and American soldiers fought side by side, brothers in arms, in defense of the Philippines and the Asia Pacific. No one could have said it better than the late Carlos P. Romulo, at that time aide to General Douglas MacArthur and future president of the United Nations General Assembly, when he said that the Second World War saw how, and I quote, a captive nation had united under bandage to fight in support of the Americans who had once been their conquerors, white and brown brothers who went cold and wet and hungry in tropic mud, who might have given up but did not, who joined forces and grew and survived against incredible opposition, thinking the same thoughts, sharing the same dreams, fighting for the same ideals, equality, fraternity, liberty. This year's commemoration is significant as we also commemorate the 75th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties between the Philippines and the United States. The alliance between our two countries has been strengthened by our shared history, a history where the Philippines and the United States turned to each other for comfort and drew strength from one another during one of the darkest periods in world history. The conferment in 2016 of the United States Congressional Gold Medal, America's highest civilian award, 
is a further testament to the heroism of our Filipino World War II veterans and to the enduring bonds between our two peoples. Today, I feel deeply inspired and hopeful as you all came to remember our veterans. I wish to express my deepest gratitude to the hardworking organizations and individuals for tirelessly campaigning to ensure that the sacrifices made by our beloved veterans are given due recognition and will, will be forever etched in this country's history. We at the Consulate stand with you in this mission and are ready to assist you in any way we can so that more people will become aware of these important events in history. May you never tire in reminding younger generations of Filipinos and Americans of these seminal moments in our common history as two nations and peoples. I wish you all a meaningful observance of Veterans Day. Thank you and mabuhay. Good morning and happy Veterans Day. I'm glad to be joining you all virtually to celebrate the veterans and veteran families of Vallejo, as well as honor the hundreds of soldiers, Marines, sailors, and family members buried at the Mare Island Naval Cemetery. We all know that this is hallowed ground. I was proud to work with Representative Mike Thompson to make sure this cemetery was restored and maintained as a proper burial ground by the National Cemetery Administration. Everyone buried here, whether they served overseas or here at home, made tremendous sacrifices for our nation. For that, we are forever grateful. To the veterans joining us today, I want to say on behalf of myself and the House Committee on Veterans Affairs, thank you. Thank you for your patriotism, your sacrifice, and your commitment to upholding our country's most sacred ideals, both during your time in service and long after you've hung up your uniform for the last time. I know many of you came forward during this pandemic to further serve your community. Know that that work has not gone unnoticed. Please know that the committee is working tirelessly to back up our thank yous with action and make sure you have access to the care and benefits you've earned. So far this year, the committee helped introduce bills that will expand mental health care and services to veterans at higher risk of dying by suicide, including women veterans and Native veterans. Some of these bills, including Representative Cindy Axney's Sergeant Ketchum Rural Veterans Mental Health Act, have been signed into law and ensure veterans in rural areas can access the mental health services and care they need from VA, regardless of where they live. We're also trying to make good on our promise to care for all veterans living with the effects of toxic exposure, including burn pits, Agent Orange, and radiation. This summer, the committee passed the Bipartisan Honoring Our Pact Act, a comprehensive bill that upholds the promise we make to veterans that we will take care of them when they return home. By expanding VA benefits and care to up to 3.5 million toxic exposed veterans, we are letting current and future veterans know that VA will be able to care for them. This committee will never relent in its duty to serve veterans and their families. Today, let us celebrate all who have served our country. Hey everybody, it's Governor Gavin Newsom. Today on Veterans Day, we pay tribute to those who once served in our Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard for their bravery and their selflessness. Today, I'm personally thinking of my grandfather, Arthur Menzies, who served in World War II in the Philippines and marched in Corregidor and spent years as a prisoner of war. You know, California is home to over 1.6 million veterans. That's the most of any other state in the nation. And we continue as a state on our work to ensure that our veterans and their families receive the resources and support they need, the resources and support they deserve. And every day I'm inspired, inspired by the commitment of our veterans to defend our Constitution and our fundamental liberties. We thank you for your sacrifice and your service. Good afternoon, members of our armed services, veterans, and friends. Today we honor our veterans who embody our values of courage, patriotism, and selflessness. 
Veterans are real life heroes and sheroes who promise to protect and defend this great nation and to keep our country free. As a free nation, we are indebted to them and grateful forever. So today we thank you and celebrate you. Let us not forget their bravery and valor. Today, we remember them by embracing these universal tenets, honor of country, the courage to defend it, and by having selflessness by giving to and honoring others. And to all of our families whose lives have been changed by war and the effects of it, I salute you and thank you on this very special day. Happy Veterans Day. Veterans, families, and friends of veterans. As a veteran of the world's greatest Navy, I really wish my schedule permitted me to be with you at Mare Island today. Veterans Day is of special significance to the American Legion. The day itself can be traced back to the armistice, which ended World War I which at the time was believed to be the war to end all wars. Our organization was founded by World War I veterans who were committed to ensuring the well-being of all vet America's veterans. Sadly, we know it was not the war to end all wars, but we also know that veterans have continuously protected our nation since the first shot was fired during the Revolutionary War. Not all veterans have been in combat, but the one common denominator that all these great men and women share is that they had taken an oath to die for their nation if called upon. That is a remarkable commitment. Not only have veterans defended us in war, but they've also kept the peace in the wars that we did not have to fight due to their remarkable commitment, bravery, and strength. At the very least, use this day to thank a veteran. If you're an employer looking for talented workers, Hire a veteran. If you're a consumer preparing to make a purchase, shop at a veteran's owned business. To my fellow veterans, let's look out for each other. Communicate and talk. In the American Legion, we call this a buddy check. There is never a bad day to honor a veteran, but Veterans Day is the perfect time to renew our commitment that no veteran should be left behind. Thank you for being here. God bless America, and God bless our veterans. Colonel Liga, thank you so much for your kind introduction. Mayor Robert McConnell, Vice Mayor Rosanna Aliga, and City Major Mike, Manager Mike Malone, I am honored by your kind invitation to speak on the grounds of this historic cemetery on Veterans Day. I also extend my gratitude to our distinguished attendees today, Congressman Mike Thompson, Governor Gavin Newsom, State Senator Bill Dodd, Assemblymember Tim Grayson, former Mayor Bob Sampayan, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Carnig Ohanesian, Deputy Undersecretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs, Glenn Powers, Major Generals Matthew Baker, Miles Davis, and Jay Coggin, and Veterans of Foreign Wars, National Junior Vice Commander, Dwayne Sarmiento. I also thank Director Terrence Davis and Melissa Tikboa and the entire Vallejo Public Works Department who have been working tirelessly with the DOD IRT team to refurbish these hallowed grounds and are now collaborating with the National Cemetery Administration staff in preparing for the transfer of this oldest naval cemetery on the West Coast. My sincere thanks also go out to Shelley Low Miller and the many other volunteers for making today a success. As we gather to celebrate Veterans Day, it is well to reflect on the journey that brought us to this day. Only a few short years ago, this sacred place was in such a state of decay as to dishonor those heroes buried here. Now Mare Island Naval Cemetery is a place of honor and respect for the fallen and is on its way toward meeting the standard expected for such a national shrine. It is also a monument to what is possible when citizens, political leaders, the media and veterans unite with purpose to restore and maintain the final resting place for so many of our honored veterans 
and shipmates. The story of Mare Island Naval Cemetery's rebirth is a story best told through the acts of individuals willing to put in the hard work to build awareness of the deplorable state of the cemetery and the need to fix it. Then keeping that awareness alive in the public's mind while the political leaders crafted a solution. The primary person responsible for creating and maintaining this awareness is Rachel Zirin, formerly of the Vallejo Times Herald and now a full-time grandmother. Her numerous articles reporting on the efforts to rescue the cemetery were central to the effort. In addition, Mr. Bob Wiley of the Scottish American Military Society worked tirelessly to build support among the many statewide veterans organizations and to elicit Bay Area wide TV news coverage. A very spe special shout out goes to the local Vallejo st stalwarts in the continuing saga of the rebirth of Mare Island Naval Cemetery. Vallejo's own Colonel Nestor Alika, whose sheer doggedness and tenacity were instrumental in restoring the cemetery and gaining the passage of the landmark legislation that will transfer the cemetery to the Department of Veterans Affairs. I count it a distinct honor to have worked with Nestor for three years as he organized a nationwide petition drive on behalf of the cemetery. And as he pressed, pressed and continued to press the political leaders to get the legislation done. Former Mayor Bob Sampayan and the city council and then city manager Greg Nyhoff made sure the city of Vallejo provi provided adequate resources for the DOD Innovative Readiness Project to, su to succeed. They also officially ceded title to the, to the cemetery in order to gain the needed expertise and material support for the perpetual maintenance and restoration of the cemetery. The story of the rebirth is also a story of finding opportunities to make short-term improvements while the political process worked its way through Congress. The great opportunity in the Mayor Island story is the Department of Defense Innovative Readiness training project, which we celebrated with the rededication ceremony last year on Veterans Day. Mr. Carnig Ohanesi, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Environment, was responsible for identifying this opportunity for short-term help and for shepherding the project through to approval. From then, it was the leadership of U.S. Army Major Douglas Hayes and the soldiers of the 801st 322nd and 374th engineer companies who were the boots on the ground, as well as the staff of the 397th engineer battalion, the 301st maneuver enhancement brigade, and the 436th, excuse me, the 416th theater engineer command led by Major General Matthew Baker and the DOD IRT headquarters team led by Colonel Jacqueline Chatwick. The 801st Engineer Construction Company, an Army Reserve unit based a half mile north of here and led by Captain Brandon Sawyer and First Sergeant Patrick Mooney, literally took ownership of the cemetery and put in their heart, soul, skills and backbreaking work into making the effort a resounding success. This paved the way for the transfer to the VA. The work of the DOD IRT was also supported with technical guidance and support from the professionals of the National Cemetery Administration's Field Programs Directorate led by Mr. Glenn Powers and the California State Military Reserve led by Major General Jay Coggin. Finally, the ultimate prize, the ownership transfer to the VA's National Cemetery Administration and the guarantee of professional maintenance and restoration of the cemetery was achieved through the tireless efforts of local Congressman Mike Thompson and his staff and Senator Dianne Feinstein and her staff. The legislation did not succeed in the first three House and Senate bills, but they stuck with it and gained the victory the fourth time around in the fiscal year 20, 2021 
National Defense Authorization Act. Another key player in the legislative effort was Mr. Thomas Banzel, General Counsel of the Veterans and Military Families for Progress and a disabled veteran. Thomas walked the halls of Congress for three years, lobbying tirelessly for justice for the cemetery. He also mobilized all the major veteran service organizations in Washington to actively support the legislation. Mr. Carlos Fuentes, then the legislative director at the national headquarters of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, deserves particular recognition for placing Mayor Island high on his organization's legislative agenda and for helping mobilize all the veterans service organizations nationwide. In closing, thank you for the opportunity to tell the story of how a group of dedicated citizens, veterans, a local reporter, government leaders, and soldiers worked together to achieve justice for this historic burial ground. It is fitting to the memory of those veterans buried here that this story be told on Veterans Day. Now it is my honor to turn over the program to former Mayor Bob Sampayan, who will introduce our next speaker, Speaker, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Carnig Ohanesi. Thank you very much. Joyce Gals of the Mare Island Historic Parks Foundation brings a wreath here to honor our fallen soldiers. So she will be laying the wreath at the cemetery. And Joyce Giles is also the author of the fascinating book entitled Mare Island Cemetery. And it's available for sale if you would like to uh, purchase a copy. We will now move forward with the playing of the taps by Greg Morrow. First Sergeant Greg Morrow was U.S. Army retired for uh, bugling taps, and he served for nearly 31 years with service covering odds, ODS Operation Desert Storm to GOWT, Global War on Terrorism, and received many meritorious awards. So. Thank you. Please remain standing for the benediction by Reverend Ray Bernardus of Vallejo's Lord's Fellowship. Let us pray. May the God of peace, the Lord Jesus Christ, grant us his peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, send us your peace to the soul of our nation. Lord, send us your peace and well-being to our veterans, their families, and to future generations. To Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Ray. Um, I'd like to call on uh, Neil Henderson, post-1921 Scottish American Military Society for the bagpipes. Neil Henderson of post-1921 um, is a member of the Scottish American Military Society for playing the bagpipes.
Thank you very much. Before we uh, conclude our uh, ceremonies, this is the end of our program, and we wish to remind everyone to be, please be mindful of COVID-19 while we interact with others. So please minimize uh, shaking of hands if you wish. And um, just as a reminder, on your way out of the cemetery, you will see a banner that's red, white, and blue balloons. And this is the Rebuilding Together Solano County, and they're giving out safe at-home kits for veterans, as well as food boxes. And this is sponsored by Wells Fargo and Home Depot. So thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. There is another ceremony at the uh, Behind City Hall at 11 a.m., sponsored by the City of Vallejo and American Legion Post 603. You're welcome to attend that ceremony as well. Again, happy Veterans Day, everyone. Enjoy Vallejo, enjoy today, and thank you so very much for honoring our veterans today.